Okay, as we descend the staircase, first thing you see is a blown up advertisement for the TRS-80 Color Computer Model 1 uh, sent in to us by a listener. And this is kind of the grand uh, view here of Amigo Studios. Uh, I guess we'll just kind of work our way around. As you can see, I've got some uh, guitars set up here. We've been recording some special Patreon songs where all the people that support the show. Uh, so that's what that is. But uh, first up, we have a, a Power Mac G4 Quicksilver. This was my dream Mac uh, growing up uh, in college. These were in the, the, the music labs in school. And I always wanted one. And then one day I bought one. And now I have absolutely no idea what to do with it. Um, but I've got the uh, keyboard and mouse. The keyboard and mouse are actually for a G5. Uh, I like the G5 keyboard and mouse more than the G4 black keyboard and mouse. But anyway, um, yeah, I'm hopeful that one day I'll come up with a cool thing to do with a uh, classic Mac. But so far, uh, I just have not done anything with it yet. Uh, we've got an Amiga 5 and a quarter inch drive, which is a weird kind of thing. You don't see those too often um, with a user created uh, on off switch uh, that, uh, that came with it. So, um, we got that. And this is kind of the shelf of computers of, of classic micros, uh, behind it. You see the, uh, Activision 2600 collection that I've amassed over the years. And, uh, we've got a, just a generic or not generic, but your typical Apple II or, uh, Mac Performa, uh, LC type keyboard. And then there's a, an Atari 1200 XL, the rarest of the Atari 8-bit micros. Got an Amstrad CPC 464, a PAL Commodore 64. Above that is a uh, ZX Spectrum Plus 2, which is fantastic, I love it. And finally, a PAL Amiga 600. So um, for many years, uh, we were unable to play PAL games because we didn't have a PAL system, um, and now we do. So I, I use that quite a bit uh, with a GoTech. This is a triple action pinball machine. This is a Williams machine from 1974. Um, I bought this uh, from a local fella, got a real good deal on it. Uh, it's in pretty good working condition, and... Uh, it's a, if you like pinball, this is a, a good early uh, solid state system. It's got a spinner in the middle. Pretty good mechanics, pretty deep for a, an earlier game, triple action. Continuing around the room, we have a Mario Brothers arcade machine. I got this at an auction in Tennessee, my only ever arcade auction. Um, and uh, I put the high score chip in it, and it works really well. I've had to clean the contacts on it, but other than that, no maintenance other than just your general cleaning. I've got the shelf full of board games here, including Gloomhaven, which I paid an extortionate amount of money for and played like three times because it's really hard to get set up. Over here is uh, my collection of black box uh, NES games. Um, this is probably one of the, my most prized things because these were the games that I lusted after when I was a kid. Uh, I love the pixel art on the front. So much different than the art on the computers, which was always stylized. Um, of course, I like that too, as you'll see later. Uh, we got the big shelf of games over here now. Got the Katamari Damacy poster. Um, I got a Super Famicom edition of Chrono Trigger that I picked up when I was in Japan. Um, looks like some Game.com carts. Uh, Blue Max for the Atari 8-bit. Um, and then we've got just a selection of uh, Amiga games in the back. Some Commodore cassettes in the front. Probably see some games that you recognize there. I really like these big box uh, ZX Spectrum titles. I, I'm working on collecting the whole set of these. Uh, I love the the rainbow motif. Kind of reminds me of like the the Activision thing. Um, a little mini diorama that I picked up in Japan. Whoa! This is probably dirt common now, but at the time I'd never seen anything like it. Uh, I gotta pick up that bullet bill there. Anyway, I'll do that later. Uh, some Atari 8-bit games down here. 
more Amiga stuff. Uh, and I've got just a kind of a hodgepodge of systems. Get that TNC surf design out of the way. Uh, this is uh, my newest edition, this Coleco Telstar um, unit. I associate the Telstar mostly with the three in one with the driving controls and all that stuff. But this is just your run of the mill. I guess it's called the Telstar Alpha. You got a NES, uh, an N64, and an Atari 7800 that I was just playing with earlier today. Over here, we've got some 7800 loose games, a couple modern, more modern games, PS2, PS3, working our way up. Um, we've got the uh, just some more games, including a sealed Death Star Battle for the Atari 8-bit, one of my favorite games. I've got that through the Amigo Secret Santa. And here's just something you don't see too often. This is a Samsung Saturn copy of Daytona USA because... In the up until the early 2000s, you couldn't have Japanese consoles. They had to be relicensed through the Korean conglomerates. So you had the Hyundai Comboy, which was the NES and Super Nintendo, and then the Samsung made the Sega properties. And I've got a selection of retro gaming books here. Some of my favorites. The NES Works books are quite good, quite good. Um, and uh, so yeah, and then up top. Got some accoutrement. Got the uh, there's an old uh, Coleco Pac-Man tabletop game from the original line, and uh, these are really neat. These are little mini dioramas uh, from Namco, and they actually will play uh, little samples from the game. So I thought that was kind of neat. We've got a Macintosh Plus, uh, one of my earliest eBay purchases from like 1998 uh, that I've got running with a floppy emu drive. Down here is uh, Apple IIe, and what's interesting about this Apple IIe is that it has two different sets of keycaps on it. It's like, <laughs> they, I don't know how this happened, and look at that wacky Apple key. I've never seen anything like it before. Um, I've not had a lot of time. That's not true. I've had all the time in the world. I've not had the inclination to play around with the Apple II, uh, as it really doesn't hold a lot of nostalgia for me, but I like having it around, and it's just massive. I mean, the case is huge. All those expansion boards and stuff you could fit in there. So, really cool. And then this is the shelf of ZX Spectrum. So, this these these cassettes are two and three layers deep. Uh, I've cleared some space here. These are the games pushed back that I've already played. And eventually, I'm going to work my way through all of these. We have a listener that sent us several collections worth of cassettes. And uh, with that plus two with the built-in uh, cassette drive, uh, it's really made playing these fun. I enjoy the loading times immensely. Up next, we've got the MAME cab, the requisite MAME cab that belongs in every every game room. This is running uh, CoinOps uh, Forgotten Worlds, which is a, uh, a really, really uh, great package of uh, arcade games and console games. Uh, this was originally a Dynamo Z-Back type cab uh, that I refurbished uh, completely, and I added all new buttons and sticks and paint and stuff and tried to make it kind of like a Neo Geo cab. And I'm happy with the way it turned out. We've got some uh, marquees. I actually forgot to turn these on. These are backlit marquees uh, that are uh, that I got from a shop when I was living in Virginia. And uh, my meager, loose Atari 2600 collection. I don't have a lot of 2600 games. And some classic Tiger LED games, uh, Road Race and Football. Coming over here, this is actually where we film Amigos. Uh, this is our filming computer with our AV rig, otherwise known as the Logitech C920, with some lav mics feeding into this uh, this uh, Behringer board over here. And uh, up against this background, I've actually set up my Amiga 1000 uh, setting towards the camera just to give people a chance to gaze upon its visage as we film Amigos. Um, and uh, we've got some mugs, Amiga-related mugs. Brutal Barracuda sent this to us, a custom deal. Then the Amiga Ireland, and of course the classic logo there. This 1000 uh, is, it's in, it's in pretty good shape, although the disk drive doesn't load things properly. Um, there are only a couple things that will actually work on it. And uh, because of the enclosure, um, I can't put another drive in here. So if anybody has any ideas, on where to source a replacement 1000 drive and enclosure for not a million dollars, uh, let me know. 
And finally, this is where I play most of my games every week, sitting here in front of the CRT. I love playing games in front of a CRT because um, it, it just the glow, the colors are so vibrant. I know it really doesn't show too well on the video itself, but uh, I will pluck, hook up my Spectrum or my Amiga or my Coco here or the Atari and, uh, and just go to town. And, and what I do is I just take one of these monitors and just bring it over here and, and that's how I monitor the chat. So uh, this is how we actually uh, export the Coco and the Atari uh, composite signal because the, the signal is so weird a normal capture card won't do it. So we actually, Aaron and I both have these. Um, these are uh, SV300W. I believe that these are Samsung um, drives, maybe JVC. And, um, and uh, but these are really, really expensive old VS VCRs uh, that will play any, any region. And they also decode uh, crazy composite signals into S video, which we put through the capture card. So um, anyway, uh, this was, uh, just a, 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 not really a quick, this went on longer than I thought, a little rundown of Amigo Studios. I guess I forgot to mention my trombone. Here's my trombone. Um, and, uh, I hope you've enjoyed it. And, uh, thanks a lot, Neil, for giving me a chance to show off the old, uh, my, my, my man cave. See you guys later. Bye.